Ah, the podcast. It's been so long. I missed everybody. <clears throat> oh, four weeks. Yeah, well, I was in Florida, so... Unfortunately, not Disney World, but, like, still the other interesting part of Florida. Yes, and currently that wolf is in Nevada, and I won't see him for another two years. And he is, to put it in the words of, uh, Cloris Leachman, he was my boyfriend! I don't think you can do comedic yelling when you have to be quiet all the time. It doesn't quite work the same. I know, it's because the balls are paper thin. Mm. Yeah, work with, yeah, work with what you got. I'm, I'm not objecting to it. It's one of the few upsides to be shooting in a basement. Downside, yeah. darkest um, shit. So. I'll probably take a cue from Nash and be the mildly annoyed kind of thing. Instead of just overly angry, I guess. Eh, but I, no, do, what, do what you want, Morgan. Yeah, I just... I'm not gonna objectify what works and what doesn't work. But it weirds Jada out. <laughs> Yeah, but that's her I'm problem, not yours. What, I'm just talking about what the audience would appreciate. I know. The audience would appreciate. She's putting her two cents in. You don't have to listen to it all the yeah, time. That's what's really important, you know? That we work as an entertainment system. Yeah, I know, I know. It's just that once in a while, my mother would come up to me and she'd like, Morgan! You better be going to bed, Morgan! You can't be staying up all night on Skype, Morgan! <laughs> she's, a, she's, she's a nice mother, I kid, I kid. She's, she's a very nice... Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, I'm waiting. I want to get my. Oh. Uh. Is, yep. I was right. Oh. Yep, yep. That's what I thought. Oh, start without him. Okay. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm that's fine. Do uh, we pretty... really want him to be, like, coming in in the middle of the podcast? We've done oh, it before. Yeah, we've we've done, done it before, before, Jada. Yeah. I'm honestly pretty much waiting till I can afford, like, a lot. Like,. A laptop so that I can bring it downstairs and do what I want. Like, oh yeah, as loud as I want and stuff like that. Oh yeah, it was. It, it would be like the good old days, like when we were just audio. I, was I know. Recording downstairs, and I, I was doing Skype on my phone. Was it now? I couldn't even yeah. notice. That was nice. Nice. wow. I. Wow. Dare to try and put Skype on my phone? It would probably make it worse than the flames. My phone can barely handle YouTube. <sighs> Alright, so I have prepared this podcast very well. This is our 50th episode. It is? Yes. Yeah. It is. This is our 50th episode. Ah, yes, oh, all 50 too. episodes. I remember the first. <laughs> I know Jada's a new recruit, but she's part of the part of the legacy. I, I feel every inch of the significance of this. Hey, you might enjoy the celebration. Uh, where's my pen at? So, here's what I have planned out. I'll give you the scoop. Okay, so, we know the films, sort of. I didn't tell everybody. Everybody knows their film. I've organized it by how fresh they are on Rotten Tomatoes. Mm-hmm. Morgan's first. Yay! And uh, James is last, so that's why it'd be good for him to come in whenever he wants, because he can talk about his film last. Mike, was this movie directed by Brian Robbins? Which movie? Which James? Which movie? Uh, you know Brian Robbins. He collaborated with Eddie Murphy in the quote-unquote shit days of Murphy's career. Okay, but what movie are you talking about? Oh, it could be uh, like something like Norbit or A Thousand Words or uh, Meet or Meet Meet Dave. Dave. Uh, James's movie is not like rotten it's still fresh and it's okay okay that's all i need okay. to know oh, no, we're no, still no. looking that's... at his good no, days we're, we're still looking at his fresh movies not any rotten nothing bad not okay. not okay. nothing I like i spy why. or anything like that just all right it, it's it's probably something like vampire book or nope. something. nope we talked about that already actually so oh yeah that was on the like, vampires episode we're, we're talking about pre-mansion curse murphy uh okay. well okay so Technically, that there's two 80s movies, two 90s movies, and one from the 2000s. Right. Pre lost his contract with Paramount and stopped working with Paramount in general. Eddie mm. Murphy. Um. Okay. So, and then we're gonna do like a mini episode here with uh, a movie topic, which kind of coincides with the podcast, which we'll talk about the 
announcement of the Mulan live action remake. So we'll talk about that for 15 minutes and then we'll go into the actual episode. Um, I have a question. Sure. But we also got to tap into the Winnie the Pooh remake as well, since that was also announced this week. You, we can mention it. It's... Isn't that still just a rumor? No, it's true. It's, it's official. true. It's official now. Yeah, but no information about it. Has it's, actually just an it's, it's just an announcement. There actually is. It's just an announcement. They have. They got the director, and they do have a bit of the premise. That was fast. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I mean, Cinema Lounge is pretty uh, much our pre-talk. Sorry, with her. I'm being talking. serious. I'm not doing I know you're being wrong. serious. You just happen to be pissing me off also. <laughs> Here we I'm go. Alright. Clean Disney, not me. <laughs> this is why I'm a nice I don't have enough good opinion on the Mulan thing to do 15 minutes. I got maybe two minutes of opinion for the Mulan live action. That's fine. Yeah, and I, and I, I barely know and I barely know Jack shit about the Mulan thing. And J- and Jack left town. That's about as much information that's come all right, out. All right, yeah. all right, all right, all right. So we can talk about other stuff too as well. God, can you just we can calm the fuck down? That's why we can also bring in the Winnie the Pooh remake. That's that's what I mean. It's a cinema lounge is a place where we can talk about movie news, movie related stuff, not just the topics at hand. Fuck. Okay. Jeez. Let me get my time. It has going. a gavel. Now. I have a. I have this. <laughs> <laughs> Judge Matt. That was just the right word for it. Yeah. Your crimes, I, I, I sent you to finish watching this I movie. don't know if it was like a gamble or a gamble. Like, I don't know. I didn't want to screw up in English, so. Matt. Anyways, I, I actually got this. I actually took it from a, um, like a, a seafood restaurant. Like, I ordered crabs, and they brought this. I decided to take it. You because st- it, it came with a bucket, so. You might as well. stole it. You... Mike, I don't, I don't know about this. It's already almost quarter to eleven, and we've got all five people tonight. Are you sure we have time to do a mini sode or whatever? Oh yeah. It's, it's only fifteen minutes, and we do an hour and a half podcast. Can you just relax? relax. Somebody's easily flustered. I am. I cannot relax. Let it begin. You're supposed to be the leader here, Mike. I am the leader. I had this all organized, so if you piss me off, you won't be happy. If I have a question about what's going to happen, then it shouldn't be that frustrating for you to have to answer it if you've got it all planned out. Okay. I'll just say that. I have everything planned out, Jada. Got it? Yes, I've got it. Good. I simply wonder about your amount of fluster, dude. I get flustered very easily. Thank you very much. That's for sync. Okay, three. Didn't work, we're still floating. What you? Yeah, yep. Punny. Very punny. Started the party off right. Oh, with puns. I miss those puns. That's not very punny. I love a guy who loves puns, and that guy is me. Okay. Mikey, it will never work. (laughs) Alright, one more minute. Till we start. And, uh, by the way, in the next episode, just so you're thinking ahead, is uh, we're talking about trilogies. Movies that are in three trilogies. Alright, All right, I can probably do that. I can do that. I think I'm down for that one, but I can't remember. You are down for that. It's on my list. Yeah, I'm not going to think of an obscure trilogy. <laughs> I know. Matt's got to think about an animated trilogy. I don't know if those oh, exist. Easy. Yeah, they do. There's plenty. There, yeah, there are actually a lot. I, I, I can't I, think of any animated trilogies. I hope they Come on. Could. Serious? Okay, there's that one, but it's gonna have a fourth movie in like a couple of years, so. But that doesn't coincide with the trilogy. That's a separate movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's still a continuation of the story. Mm-mm. It's a different. It's a continuation sto- of the universe and the characters, which means it's a continuation enough for it to qualify as a. Yeah, but for now, it's still considered I... a trilogy. 
Oh, Ghostbusters. No, what? No! I'm talking about Toy Story! Oh yeah, I forgot about that. If Ghostbusters was a trilogy, there'd be a lot less bitching in the world. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Everyone would just be like, why can't we have Ghostbusters 5? <laughs> God damn it, there was not enough Ghostbusters! This is why we can't have nice things from Harold Ramos. <laughs> Alright guys, in 3, 2, 1... Hello, welcome to Cinema Lounge, where we sit back, relax, and talk about movie news. I'm your host, Mike Mixtape, and this is my lovely crew. We'll, this is our mini-sode. We'll get formally introduced in the podcast. This is just a little sampling for your entertainment purposes. Uh, recently, uh, big news from Disney, a couple of them. Uh, one of them is kind of coinciding with our episode here. Is uh, They announced a Mulan live-action remake. What... The fuck? I don't know if I'd qualify it as big news. Not exactly the top priority of Disney Studios, their little live action Disney movie it's, trend. It's a trend now because Cinderella came out. Oh yeah, boy, we have to have Mulan next. I have. Cinderella did not start the trend, Maleficent did. First of no, all. It was Al- no, it was Tim Burton's no. Alice in Wonderland. That's right. Yeah. I I don't ha- I don't have any facts, so I'm sorry. Wait 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 wait. wait. Alice Warland didn't bomb. The critics no. hated it, but yet it was a big hit. It, it, it did a billion hit. dollars at the box office. That's what I said. Well, it, like even with the critics, it was actually more mixed than it was negative. Yeah. Bullshit. I was there. I experienced it. And for th- and besides, it was years before they tried doing it again. It was. It was actually the one that revolutionized it, though. That's the one that started the whole trend in the first place. Mm-hmm. But did it, though, when it took them years to try and do anything like that? And then Cinderella comes out only one year after... I'm not just... Does? I'm not just talking about Disney. I mean the whole, like, action fairy tale genre in general. Okay, for, but that's like, different. This isn't all... necessarily that. Yeah, it is. Cinderella was... No, it wasn't. The whole Red Riding Hood, Hansel and Gretel, Witch Hunters, that is not the same as what is going on here. For one thing, Cinderella was hardly action-y. It wasn't even all that subversive, the original fairy tale. It was it, just well, the original. Here's the thing. It started out as, like, the action fairy tale because, like, in technicality, Alice in Wonderland was based more on the book than the Disney film. Like, other studios tried it out, some succeeded, like Snow White and the Hudson, some didn't, like Hansel and Gretel. And then Disney decided to do it again, but with their own things, like with Maleficent. And then they did it again with, Cin- uh, with recently with Cinderella, and now they're, like, really doing it. Now, like it's, that it's ended... Not, it's not action it's not subversive, it's not a really, really serious, gritty take on it. Like not Mirror, Cinderella. Mirror and, and Snow White and the Hudson. Not even really Maleficent. Even yes. if it is from the perspective of the bad guy, it's still a pretty fairy tale esque no, story. Not even. It's just a messed up version of the original 1959 animated feature. Not, that was just I'm, pure stupidity. I'm not I know you. I know you, well. Matt. You're my very grandfather. I'm not, talk, I'm, not talk, I'm not talking about its quality. I'm talking about its tone, and their tone is fairly similar to the Disney movies, which is part of the problem. Not, that they're not really doing much that's new with it, except kind of with Maleficent, but they kind of, uh, I'm saying kind of too much. The point is, this is this is a different, maybe it's related to the whole gritty, sort of serious fairy tale adaptation thing, but it is definitely its own branch. Actually, one of my friends, actually, I found one of my friends, um, she actually said something on Twitter, and it made so much sense. Uh, it's the fact that um, like these live action Disney remakes, they are now they are today's like this generation's version of the direct to DVD sequels. If you really do think about it. Well, well really... I, I actually there... beg to con- I, I beg to differ on this, Ford. Every single generation is going to go through a trend. We had one year where we had all these biblical epics in the 1950s, then the 1960s we had these grand musical epics that were trying to be like the next sound of music and they didn't do well, their few hits the mark. Then Jaws comes along it's like, we gotta tackle on this fish with uh, uh, 
a few other films here and there. And then we had the Space Age in the 80s, so it's like every single generation is going to have a trend of films, mm -hmm. and they're going to try and fall off of that. Right. And what we're, we're dealing with here is just a trend at the moment, yep. a trend of you know reimagining fairy tale kind of things. And Into the Woods doesn't count because it's an adaptation, but at yep. the very least, what? it's as close as the source will be, so shut up. But the difference in what you're talking about is that it was a overarching trend in the whole of Hollywood, and it was tackled by multiple different studios. This is all Disney. Nobody mm -hmm. else is really trying to do this yet. I don't know. Maybe well, Dreamworks they did, but with they live action Shrek and something. Yeah. Well, it's going to be because we had we got Pan coming out in the summer. That's supposed to be like you know this reinvasioning of Peter Pan or something like that. Right. I know. I know. I, I I feel the same. I feel the okay. same. Fast Tiger Lily. Really. Don't even talk. Why Blackbeard's the villain? Why? Because villains are cooler when they have tragic backstories. Uh, yeah, they really, I'm really sure. simplified and insulting tragic backstories. That is what makes good entertainment. Not really. But anyways, no. But... I, I, I want Hook more now. Yeah, like... And that no, was good. Especially, I thought, like, Hugh Jackman would be, like, Hook or something, but no, it turns out that... They're gonna pull the Maleficent thing again with Hook. It's like it was like he's this explorer that helped Peter Pan once. It's like, really dude? Honestly, I don't even blame Maleficent for this. You know what I you know what movie I blame for Disney's little fascination with villain backstories that are stupid? I blame Oz the Great and Powerful. Really? I thought you were gonna say Wicked. No, Wicked <laughs> is not a movie, nor is it Disney yet. Mm. Well, it, it did start like some like this trend. There's definitely some inspiration for Wicked in Maleficent, although, like, ugh. Yeah, minus in the trash can. In terms of concept more than, like, actual... In yeah, the concept like, of but, but, but Oz the Great and Powerful had this prequel notion of taking a classic movie, not Disney, but by God, Disney wants it to be, and, and telling the story of the characters, especially the bad guy, because the bad guy backstories are cool, interesting you know honestly i always find it funny like i i find it funny when i would watch um oz the great and powerful i just never really take it seriously because of Mila kunis performance it's really not that great and like every time she would yell the only thing i would think of is shut up meg yes yes even, she didn't even speak she just screamed all the time i heard her <laughs> say, no, 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 no. Apparently the news that apparently she blew out her voice while trying to perfect the Wicked Witch laugh. And I, I sort of think there's a stigma attached to stories like that, because everybody was saying that, oh my gosh, that's really amazing, she put so much effort into this performance, that clearly says something, haters gonna hate. I just want to put it out there, that just because an actor puts a lot of effort into an aspect of their performance does not necessarily mean that said effort is for the betterment of said movie. And how do you explain Tommy Why So? Not sure what that means. A what? I know who Tommy Why So is. Okay. I'm just not sure what the connection is. The fact that people have an excuse for bad acting. That's not what I was saying. What I was saying is just because an actor puts a lot of effort into their performance does not mean that performance is automatically good. Sometimes you just suck. And Mila Kunis has a very limited range. Like, she can play kind of bitchy characters, she can play kind of nice characters, and that's about it. Yeah. Asking her to play the Wicked Witch? I don't know why. Why Mila Kunis is the Wicked Witch? She doesn't even look completely witchy. Her fucking makeup, oh my god. Her face looked like a turtle. Uh, everything about her character, the makeup, the acting, the outfit, the stupid reason as to why she's wicked. Can anybody even hear me? Because I feel like I'm getting very little response. Uh, a bit. A bit. A bit? A bit. Like, I can hear you, but not, like, like maybe amplify up your mic. My mic's up to max. I don't know. Mike, is there a problem? Nope. 
It's it's okie dokie. So maybe you're the problem, Matt, huh? huh? There's, there's no. I just don't know how to respond to anything. Mike's in a. But anyway, anyhow. Um, keeping this kind of attitude until Valentine's Day, Mike. But anyhow, back onto uh, the Mulan remake, which was the whole subject in the first place. Uh, the one thing that I, I could say about Mulan, I think the weirdest thing for me is the fact that they chose Mulan out of all the movies. Because when you think of the movies that they chose, that they've done and they're going to make, they're more like the, they're more like the classics or they're like the legendary ones, the ones that are either in the golden age of Disney, like uh, Sleeping Beauty, Cinderella, or Alice in Wonderland, or like um, like Dumbo or Jungle Book, or even Beauty and the Beast. But with Mulan, it's like it's not even 20 years old, so like, why? Uh, but I will admit it is doable. Like, I can see how they could do it. It's going to be... I can see how they could do like... Um, uh, I, I can see how they can do some sort of, uh, like, Cinderella, where they're, uh, where they're gonna be, like, where they're gonna be more serious. They can just take out, uh, the musical numbers, they're gonna take out, like, Kriki and Mushu, but they're still gonna have the comedic elements, like, with Ling, Yao, and Xian Po. So they can be going... serious about the Cinderella movie? Well, I, no, but I mean, like, I mean more realistic. In a way. Uh, the, the only way I see Mulan working is if they really pay respect to the culture a lot. If they tone down on the comedic elements, because there were some interesting bits in there, like the lush animation and, of course, the backgrounds and the scenery. I'm just thinking to myself, why can't we have more of those elements? Like, really get into the spirituality of the environment. You have the ghosts there, and they're all played up for laughs. If they do it in a sense where it's, you know, really going for gripping characters or anything that much, it would be something interesting. Like, if they really follow through with, like, this very gritty take on the legend, okay, I can buy that. But if they have, you know, what, what Cinderella did, where they had, like, little cameos and little bits taken from the animated film, like the little mice yeah. and everything. Like I mean, I'll get... to the animated feature. Yeah, this seriously, they... Oh, good God, they had... But what, what's the fat... I forgot the, the name of the mouse, the, the fat one. Um, Gus Gus? Gus Thank Gus. you, Gus. thank you. The fact they literally take the names from the actual 50s film, it's saying that they're either trying to pay homage, or they're just saying, um... Yeah, we're so not taking elements. Let's see if we can get the blue coat of the fairy godmother quick. <laughs> no, there there are like a few like they're just small little references to the animated feature. There are a lot of those, like the fact that they brought in Lucifer the cat, or um, there was a small moment when Cinderella sang "Sweet Nightingale," and the, like I, I actually, there was also a fairy godmother singing uh, "Bippity Boppity Boppity Boo." It was a short moment, but it was there. Uh, in, re in, regards, in regards to why they picked Mulan, I, I think they may or may not have run out of classics by this point. Like, except Bambi, I think they've touched upon all of the classics that they're going to. Like, they already did Snow White with fucking Mirror Mirror, or was it the other one? There were two. No, Mirror oh. Mirror, Mirror, Mirror Mirror was Touchstone. No, that was, okay. that's a completely different... Well, then Disney did the other one. All no. I know is there Disney didn't either of them. No, Disney didn't do none of them. I'm trying to you know, Can you stop the facts? I'm just trying to be trying to say things. Overall. Instead of just like <laughs> How about they think? how about they do a, a live action remake of the hunchback of Notre Dame, you know, with CGI gargoyles and Well te well technically there is a Broadway ending. There is a Broadway, the Broadway the version. They keep they... the tragic ending, yes. <laughs> the tragic they... ending isn't the Broadway version. They've done a, tra a live action Hunchback of Notre Dame several times, and they didn't need Disney's intervention to do it. Just I watch know. Just you or just need some ooh la la. Or and plenty. you must do la la. Or you read must the must damn book. book. There is Matt, plenty of access Matt, to Matt, an actual does not look right. it looks like you're doing story really of the Hunchback of Notre Dame, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and she wants you to Hello? Hello? Did anyone, Hello. Did, I, what? did 
Hello. I, I don't can, even hear what I said. I, w I was trying to listen. I was. And Morgan decided to talk over me. Like a putsy face. Sorry. Where is his face anyway? I don't see I it. He's trying to do he, a surprise. Know, it's a, it'll be revealed in the episode. Oh, okay. So. It's gonna be super exciting. So it's supposed to be a surprise for everybody. So just lower your expectations. But then they announced the Winnie the Pooh live action. CGI this, I remake. Yeah, this is this is the one where they officially jumped the shark. Okay, let me give you a bit of the synopsis of what's going on. Uh, they actually got a, they actually got a director, like he's also going to be writing this, and like he did this Sundance movie I never heard of. Okay, okay, I'm going to tell you a bit of like what they've revealed about the plot, and tell me if this sounds a little bit familiar. Christopher Robin now is a young adult, like he's around 18 and 19. And he's going back to the Hundred Acre Woods. Sounds familiar, guys? Uh, Is this not something that they've done in Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland? Right. Actually, I wasn't going to make the, the connection there. I, I thought it sounded a little bit more like Toy Story now. Toy Story 3, maybe. Not really. No. Well, like, at least that is canon. Like, this one, it just... Like, do we really need... A, Winnie the, a live action Winnie the Pooh? I remember what? in the early 2000s there was a bunch of video short movies and they were under the title The Book of Pooh and I watched them and they were sort of live action. You, There weren't people in the room. Yeah. Except yeah. like at some moments where you saw like the mother's hand. But it was it was following the, Pooh and his friends and they were like guys in suits. Yeah. It, it wasn't as bad as it sounds. Or maybe it was. I don't know. Oh, was oh yeah. Well, to, and, to, and there were puppets. They were awesome. Yeah, and they were also too smart for strangers. <laughs> that might want to touch you. It was in no way related to that. They, the effects were yeah, much better, I can tell you that. Well, kind of. I, I know that is an official Disney thing. Yes, like, but they had different suits. And different besides, suits. And besides, the Book of Pooh was a TV show, anyway. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, that was, I, yeah, I remember that was a TV show. It was. My, my, sister, my, my sister would tune into the Disney Channel. They'd have it on Playhouse Disney. They'd have a couple of characters from the animated series, like Tessie, the little bird that um, Rabbit looked after. Mm -hmm. yeah, I remember Tessie. Are you sure her name was Tessie? It was either Tessie or Tessie. I think it was Cassie. Uh, her. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Uh, I just Googled it. Yeah, they're coming up as episode seven, titled oh, I Could Have Laughed. Right. Oh. The, the point is, it was live action. So, you know. Mm -hmm. Ish. Winnie the Pooh has touched upon that universe. Just saying. Yeah, but it, that's like, that's this... a different live action. That's like with practical effects and stuff like that, with animatronics and like costumes and stuff like that. We're talking about like, this is going to be like big budgeted CG with big name actors well, attached to it. Really this... realistic fur. Body. This would yeah. just be like Disney's well, version of Paddington. Wait, what? Okay. What did you say? Disney's version of Paddington. <laughs> oh, good God. <laughs> I mean, people love Paddington, so Disney's like, you should know I what? You... We'll do that. Should I, show you that. should I show you guys those creepy Paddington pictures? Like, Pass. back when like, they showed like the teaser post poster no. and stuff like that? That's <laughs> If you audience at home would like to look it up, go look it up because we're not going to show it to you. Away from me. Also, just make it, sure to Google, make sure to Google Paddington Bearback. And while you're at it, why don't you look into the Play-Doh movie that's coming out too? Oh yeah, at we got to cash up them Lego Movie money. Yeah, that's more of what that is. Weren't they also mm. making like, a cheap movie or a peak? Based off of the peep I think I heard that. I heard that. I heard that for a long time. Peeps. I think I heard that once. I don't know what's. That was a on. long time ago when they announced that, or something. It was still in development, or something. I remember talking about that in the past. I know this is completely different, but I'm a little saddened today. Mm -hmm. Can I say something about the Plato movie thing first? Oh, sure, sure. I know at some point there's going to be a Hot Wheels movie. 
I'm not even questioning or theorizing. I know it's going to happen because it's hot. They, they are planning it. I think they my, are. My question is, do you think it's they're going to do Cars it? Cars 3. My question <laughs> is, that's related to my question. My question is, do you think they're going to do it in like a Cars kind of sense where the cars themselves are alive? Or do you think they're going to do it in like a speed racer sense where there's people driving the cars? I think they're going to do like a kid's version of Fast and Furious. I think that's going to be the route they would go. They have a a, a twelve year old bald Vin Diesel <laughs> with muscles. <laughs> Not like that, but I mean like actually, that, Vin like, Diesel made a cameo. That would be hilarious. That and would I'd be. All for that. I loved Hot Wheels as a kid. I'd watch a Hot Wheels movie. If the, you can, we, we did Lego successfully. I'm so all I'm about just, family. Why be so pessimistic yeah. about this? I ain't got friends. I got family. Oh it. Okay, Morgan, what was your off-topic thing? <sighs> David oh, Lynch is, is... David Lynch is not going to direct any of the Twin Peaks revival episodes. Oh, uh, uh, I thought... Okay. I was thinking at one point... I, I thought it would be like... Is he sad that Jason Gordon-Levitt is going to be with the Fraggle Rock? But no, he couldn't be. Unless I hear something that ticks me off of that project, yes, I will be converting to the trash heap. No. Um... <laughs> the Gorgs compel you. The Gorgs compel you. Morgan, come on. Chase your fears away. Worries for another day. Oh, touche. Yeah, so... Morgan has no comeback, because he was owned. Maybe there's a reason I should leave the podcast again. Oh, yes. What? Uh, don't want to get into that. Um, Was this... I make puns? I feel like an outsider. Oh, uh, Morgan. Are you kidding me? We're all outsiders. Are you kidding me? Morgan, come on. W would it help if I made better puns? I can make better puns. I can change for you, Morgan. On a sad note, this has been Cinema Lounge, and thanks for tuning in. And coming up is the Cinema Lounge 50th episode. The show must go on. It's showtime. Sounds my heart is breaking. No. So, yeah, Mike, tell us. I think you, for you this episode, the there is a better... I think there's a better way to start this off. It's showtime! I know, I know. I know. Why is that camera on my face? I just had to. I'm sorry. Mine was more meaningful and had singing. So. Yeah, I believe Morgan had the microphone uh, with uh, Twin Peaks. Oh, we're past that. I had Mike already into the thing. Okay. Yeah, we're past that. I did, don't even... It's not even... No. Anyways. <clears throat> in. Three. Two. One. Start timer. Hello. Sorry. I can't believe it's not butter. No, <laughs> I can't believe I'm missing the parting of the Red Sea for this. If, if you don't... Oh... Ten Commandments? Hello, it's on? Mm -hmm. Oh, I Ten, know, command I Ten know Commandments, on, right, 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 yeah. Well, it's Easter, 